Senator Hickenlooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you, uh, Ms. Bernalli. Uh, really appreciate your service and, and be willing to step in at this uh, key time. Emerging technologies, AI is top of mind. Um, they're becoming ingrained into various parts of our lives. Healthcare is absolutely no exception. Um, AI is primed to assist with trial design, um, uh, real-time monitoring, predictive analysis, uh, go down all the different aspects of, of clinical trials, which are so expensive. I think we all have agreed over a long period of time that the cost is a barrier to progress. So, uh, Dr. Bertignoli, do you think that the advent of AI will help create efficiencies in our clinical trial systems, and are there particular pitfalls we should be mindful of when considering technology in trials? Yes, thank you very much for that question. Uh, Machine learning approaches, artificial intelligence, are really wonderful new computational methods that we're all very, very excited about. You know, we've long had the scale of data that we just do not allow us to analyze it properly. However, the more we learn, the more we use these techniques, the more we realize that they have to be like any tool used in a very careful and responsible manner, particularly when it comes to human research. So uh, the short answer is yes, absolutely. This is very exciting, but with a qualifier that the design and conduct and type of data used to train these models need to be very, very carefully considered to make sure we're getting the results that really matter and are meaningful for all people. Any specific pitfalls that you'd want to put on the record? Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, the, I guess the most serious one that we hear about a lot is an AI method that might be designed and trained on one particular ethnic group or one particular uh, category of people who have perhaps more access to treatment than another, and then it gets a result that continues to disadvantage others uh, who need to be included in that kind of research. I think that's one really serious one, but you know, there are many. Uh, it's, it's a computational method after all, and it has to, we, it has to be doing what we want it to do. Right, uh, and oftentimes the, the algorithms aren't as transparent as, as some of us it, might like. It, exactly, exactly, thank you. Um, Harvard, and Brigham, Harvard and Brigham and Women's Hospital created the Multi-Regional Clinical Trials Center. Um, obviously, you're very familiar with, given your time at both institutions. Uh, the center's prime focus is improving the safety and efficacy of global clinical trials. Uh, they've trained representatives literally from dozens of countries on what is good clinical process uh, and, and what is good clinical practice. Uh, this leadership, I think, is critically important, often underestimated the, the significance of it. Um, we live in a interconnected wonderfully diverse world, but that, that interconnectedness and diversity uh, does have its own challenges as well. Um, and I think we should be making sure that we utilize all available data to inform our research decisions. So what more do you think that NIH could be doing to encourage the use of safe and rigorous uh, uh, global clinical trials? Uh, thank you for that question. I actually have personally conducted global clinical <laughs> trials in the area of cancer. Um, and uh, that was done through the use of very careful protocols that delivered data in very careful formats and that also monitored sites so that we knew exactly what care was being delivered as part of the, the, the trial that was testing a treatment. Um, those, uh, for things that really matter, uh, that level of quality is very, very important. I'll just add a parenthetically, though, there are other things that we can do in public health globally that don't necessarily need to fit into that very tight model. So we should look at everything that we can to help inform our work. Couldn't, could not have said that any better myself. And I think the, the, uh, Dr. Bertinoli's uh, eagerness and optimism is a reflection of her Western uh, roots, which uh, I have great appreciation for. And I have other questions, but I will submit them on written record and uh, thank once again the witness for being here and for your commitment to public service and turn it back to the chair.